Hey guys, today we're going to pick up from where we left off last time. Last time we built this drum kit out of uh, my voice. Today we're going to work on a bass part. So once again, the first thing we do, there's our empty MIDI track. We're going to go over to instruments here, drag an empty simpler in drag the phrase in and if you recall from last time the phrase sounded something like this i'll just turn warp warp off they don't make music like led zeppelin and pink floyd anymore and i've decided that i'm going to use the ed of led zeppelin to be my bass part so let's just find out where that is they don't make music like led about there and by the way i'm playing middle c or c3 on my keyboard led, 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 led. And again, I'll isolate it here. I don't want the L part. I just want the ed. So oh, also I'm going to turn off looping for now. And as you'll hear, uh, when I play this an octave or two lower, it's going to sound pretty good for a bass part. But we're not quite done yet. The first thing I might do is uh, going to my controls here and just filter it a little bit. And also I'm going to change the type of filter. You see here it says clean. I'm going to add the SMP filter, which as you can see in this little box here, it gives some information. It says the SMP is a hybrid filter. You don't need to worry too much about it. Just know that it sounds pretty good, especially when you add a bit of overdrive and you uh, put a little bit of resonance, and resonance on it. So this is what it sounded like with no filter. <laughs> with the filter and I'm going to add a bit of drive it gets a little bit louder so I can just turn the volume down and I'm also going to add something else which I think is pretty cool I'm going to uh, add here where it says VEL uh, that stands for velocity which re relates to how hard you hit the keys if you put that up a little bit say up to about say 30 something percent the harder you hit the keys the more the filter will open. So I'm going to hit softly first, then I'll hit harder. So you can hear as I hit harder, not only does it get a bit louder, and by the way, the reason it gets louder is because velocity contributes to volume over here, um, but also now velocity contributes to opening the filter. So that can be a kind of cool effect as you play. The next thing to do to make the bass part work is you need to make sure it's actually in tune with something in the real world because right now I'm just playing some low notes on the keyboard and it's kind of working but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab a grand piano and drag it into a new MIDI track and as I've mentioned before you just drag it into this empty space if you haven't got a MIDI track handy so now I'm playing the notes E over two octaves on my piano now have a listen to this here's the piano Here's the bass. You can hear they don't quite sound the same. They're different notes. So I need to make my bass part, which I'll relabel bass by the way, I need to make that match up with the piano. And here's how you do it. This is kind of challenging. You command click on that. So now you see these two buttons are lit. Uh, when I play the keyboard now, I'm gonna be hearing from my new bass instrument and my grand piano and their different notes. Have a listen. So it sounds to me like my bass is lower than the piano. So what I'm going to do is um, click on transpose and then as I use the arrow keys on my on my computer's keyboard I can raise the note of the bass and try to make it match the piano. That's much closer. Hear that? I went from zero up one. That's much closer, but it's actually still an octave below. So I know that if that's two, I need to go up to 14 because two plus 12 is 14. So watch this. Let me just move the mouse out of the way so you can see. Now you can hear that's almost the same note, but it's still a little bit flat which just means a little bit low. So now this detune button, CT, whereas ST stands for semitones uh, or half steps, CT stands for cents, which means hundredth of a semitone. So anyway, what I want is 14 here, and then I'm gonna 
uh, move this up from zero until it sounds in tune. So we'll start at zero, have a listen to this. About there, that's about in tune. I'm gonna go down an octave. Now have a listen to this. I'll turn the piano off and here's my bass note which I know is now in tune with the real world, with pianos, guitars, trumpets, whatever you want to throw at it. And I've created a bass sound. You'll notice though that because I switched off loop mode that the notes are really short. I mean, the lower I go, because I've got warp mode switched off as well, the lower I go, the longer they are. If I go really high, then it's quick. If I switch on warp mode, then the length remains the same, but that's actually making them shorter. So I'm going to switch that back off. It doesn't matter if the notes are short when they're high because I'm using this as a bass anyway. If you want longer notes, you need to switch on loop mode because what loop mode will do is loop this and that lets you have longer notes, but it comes with some problems. Watch this. Loop mode is on now. And you can hear that as it plays, you get a kind of a clicking as it repeats. Um, if you turn off snap mode, the clicking probably gets worse. Oh, actually, in this case, it gets better, but usually snap, as it tells you over here in the bottom left corner, uh, snap will reduce the likelihood of clicks, but it's just likelihood. You can use these controls here with uh, especially loop and length and fade to control how much of the section loop. So watch this, if I take this down loop, you can see that the part that loops is getting smaller and sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing. Um, it takes some experimentation to find out. Uh, so what happens is when I change that loop length, the first time you hit the key, it just plays the first part and then as you hold it down, it loops around this section here. And you see, you, you hear it starts to sort of stutter, which is not always ideal. Snap might help that. It might not. You can also change the length here. That's actually not bad, like that. I'm going to use that as my bass sound. And I want to show you now one more advanced trick. This is really, really neat, but not for the faint hearted. What we have over here is the word envelope or envelope and you see up here ADSR. This is an ADSR envelope or the A stands for attack, D stands for decay, S is sustain and R is release. So it's an attack, decay, sustain, release envelope. And right now it's not doing anything because the amount is zero. But what this will do, and you can see by the way there's another attack, decay, sustain, release envelope over here. We don't need that one right now. This one over here, when it's switched on by, by moving amount up a certain, you know, however much you want, or, or down by the way, um, this envelope controls how the filter opens. Essentially, it controls this filter knob uh, and it's kind of neat. Um, so for instance, the attack is a time and you can see up the top here, we've got 6.48 milliseconds. Let's say, let's set it initially to uh, around 100 milliseconds. That controls how long it takes the filter to rise to a certain point. And then this one, the decay of 600 milliseconds means the filter will then drop away. Have a, remember, this is what it sounded like with nothing on. Now if I put the amount up, uh, say, to 29, hear that, it went wow. And it, the wow was really quick because it's only 105 milliseconds. But if I make that longer, and again, if I make it, you know, up in the realm of like seven seconds, Now that's just to show you what it does. For us, if we're playing bass, like let's say we're playing bass notes that are quite short, and we want to add some kind of wow to the bass notes, we want a pretty short attack time. Let's try around half a second. It's around 500 milliseconds. 
Here, what's going on there? Here, it's it's rising up. If I if I hold it for less than the attack time, then you won't hear the full rise. But if I hold it for longer than the attack time, you'll hear the rise and then the drop. Uh, I can make the drop afterwards less severe by raising the sustain level like this. This is uh, as severe as severe as it can get, and not severe at all is up here. So I, I kind of like the severe drop, and that's what I'm going to use. So I'm setting a relatively short attack time. I'm setting the amount up to 29. It goes up to 72 in total. By the way, if I go negative, if I go into negative numbers, it does the opposite. It takes the filter. Um, it'll take the filter down instead of up. Have a listen to this. It's now in negative numbers. <laughs> And then it opens again, which doesn't sound so great for what I want. Unless I probably raise the sustain up some. Let me move that up. That's kind of cool, but it's not what I'm going for in this particular instance. So I'm going to return this back to a positive value of around 30. And remember, I've also got the velocity here. So that means uh, the harder I hit the keyboard, the more the filter will open. So let's see if you can build yourself a bass sound. Don't forget to make sure it's in tune with the rest of the world by putting it alongside a grand piano and making sure that the notes match up. And now just a really quick example. So hopefully you could hear there um, that depending on how either how hard I press the key, I got a more aggressive filter and how long I held the key down for let the filter open because of the uh, attack time here.